When I was younger, I always really wanted to go to Antarctica. Um, it's this kind of land of mystery and very few people get to go there. Um, so I worked really hard kind of throughout my life to get there. Fifteen thousand kilometers from her home, leading polar specialist Dr. Kate Winter is traversing one of the world's most extreme environments on urgent business. This is the East Antarctic ice sheet. Beneath my feet, it's about two kilometers thick, and it's flowing towards the coast really, pretty slowly. The West Antarctic ice sheet is melting. We know that it is raising global sea level rise by centimeters a year. Um, but if the East Antarctic ice sheet were to go, it would raise global sea levels by tens of meters rather than centimeters. Kate's research here, however, may help us better understand what lies beneath the icy surface in Antarctica's rock and how this could help stem the rising tide. We've also been collecting some rock samples as we go along. So rock samples that are coming out of the ice, um, they're being transported through the ice, and then rock samples up in the mountains. And we're really interested to see if there's bioavailable iron in these rock samples. Um, because this iron, when it enters the ocean, it becomes available, so that's the bioavailability. It's available to creatures in the ocean, plankton. It can cause plankton blooms. And these plankton blooms can actually draw down carbon dioxide. This natural system Kate is describing is part of what's called the biological carbon pump. Like plants and trees on land, plankton in the ocean are part of a cycle that draws carbon out of the atmosphere and deep into the ocean. On the Antarctic shelf, meanwhile, the rock sediment potentially has nutrients that give life to phytoplankton. So as the ice sheet thins in response to climate change, destabilized rock walls feeding the Southern Ocean with nutrients could enable phytoplankton blooms. And these, ultimately, could help mitigate the overall rise of CO2 in the atmosphere. We know that carbon dioxide is a really important factor in climate change. If we've got some mechanism of drawing down the carbon, I mean, it's going to be a very small amount, but if there's lots of small amounts together, it's important to piece together the information to see how much these natural systems are working. <laughs> Hi, I'm Kate. I'm James. To measure where the rock is fracturing and how quickly it's moving, Kate and her field assistant James equipped themselves with ground penetrating radars, a seismometer, a drone, and the thrill seeker's favourite, a skidoo. <laughs> So James, tell us what happened. Uh, I flipped the skidoo in a crevasse <laughs> twice. Yeah. Kate's ice-breaking adventures could help unlock important knowledge into Antarctica's future role in climate change. Not only as a passive victim of global warming, but as an agent containing seeds of resistance. And she'll be back again next year to do it all again and see just how much has changed. I just feel so lucky that I get to come here. Um, so I really want to try and share that, that enthusiasm that I have for the polar regions and the importance of climate change in, in places as fantastic as this. I just wish more of you could come here. <laughs>